Hey there, preteens. Since the beginning, God has always been deeply involved in the world. We see God's handiwork on display in creation. We see God's love on display through Jesus who came to rescue us. We respond to God in faith, believing in what we can't see because of what others can see. When we focus on what we know to be true about God and the world he created, we can have faith in what we can't see or fully understand. We put that faith into action as we follow Jesus and show his love to the world. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. This summer will be filled with stories that show us more about faith. All right, preteens, let's dive into today's story. See you next week. If you stepped outside right now, what would you see? Maybe you'd see high blue sky overhead filled with towering white clouds. Maybe you'd see crowds of people, each with their own unique look and flair. Maybe you'd see leafy trees with colorful birds swooping through their branches. Maybe you'd see tall, intricately designed buildings or vast mountains. From the rough mosaic bark on a tree to the fine lines of blood vessels just beneath your skin. Every bit of it is God's handiwork, or the work of people God created and inspired. Paul writes in his letter to the church in Rome, ever since the world was created, it has been possible to see the qualities of God that are not seen. As you look at the world around you, it's impossible not to see the fingerprints of God to see God's power, imagination, and faithfulness. Seeing what God has created and hearing stories about the wonderful things God has done can lead us to trust God more and more. And when you trust God, you're ready to make a move. As you begin to rely on God to help you face your challenges each day, others can see God at work. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud.
I'm gonna share your love with the world. Yep, you got it. How was the trip? Not a lot of leg room. Oh, but at least I had dinner. Can you hand me that drink? Yeah, I didn't pack that. I'm so sorry I'm late, John. I am having the worst day. Oh, great. Oh, we started already. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandon, and uh, this is The So-and-So Show. Uh, normally, I'm joined by my co-host, John. But today, it's, I guess it's just me until we, oh, here he is. Wow. That's incredible. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> There's my guy. Yeah, How right. you doing? Okay. Do? Oh. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. thanks for that. But actually, I'm in a pretty bad mood. So. Oh, what's wrong? Well, you know, the weather outside is just awful today. I, the, the top fell off of my lunch, and I spilled half of it. And I cut my fingernails too close, so now my cuticles hurt. Oh, wow. so you, uh, ow! Oh, why, why I'm sorry. You... I'm sorry, pal. I, you know what, though? I've got something that can make everything better today. Okay. Do you remember a few years back when I made those rose-colored glasses? Yeah, yeah. Didn't those get you in a lot of trouble? Uh, uh, flashback. Ow. Let's have slosh! <laughs> John loses! Oh! Oh! That was then. I made a few adjustments. What kind of adjustments? Well, they're better now. Everything's better when you look through rose-colored glasses. Give it a try. I fail to see how a pair of glasses is going to make my day any better, but... Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, right? Oh, yummy. Mmm. Is that my hand? Uh, yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> 
Everything is so positive. Yeah, the adjustments work, right? Yeah. Cool. Ah! Whoa! What is it? Nothing. Your head is... So super handsome? Yeah. Sure. Look, I gotta be honest, I'm not sure I can take this level of relentless positivity, so... Oh, well, that's okay. Here, I can take Actually, back. you know what? Let me, just a second, let me get started on my lunch first. Oh. Yeah, that's a good idea. And while you fill your belly, let's fill our minds! It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! Hey, fellas. Enjoying your lunch there, Brandon? Yeah. Sorry, Kellen. I just want to get finished before I give John these glasses back. What? Uh, it would really avoid a lot of confusion if you would watch the show before your segment, Kellen. I usually do, but sometimes I like the confusion. That's fair. Uh, what, what, are we, what are we talking about today, Kellen? Well, we're going to be looking at the day the Apostle Paul became a follower of Jesus. You may or may not know, but Paul is a giant figure in the Bible. Ah! And I am a giant figure, too! Look, it's Horvath standing up to Callens! Hey, Horvath! Hi, Callens! Hi! My, my figure is giant. Not so tall, but very much wide. Ah. Horvath sometimes assists with the Bible story by doing exercises that help us remember it. That's right! Let's do this! All right. Okay. So, Saul was on the road to Damascus. Wait! What? Who is Saul? I thought, I thought you were telling the story of Apostle Paul. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, yes, yes. The Apostle Paul is who we're talking about. But he had a couple of different names. Some places he was called Paul, and other places he was called Saul. So, Paul and Saul are the same peoples? That's right. I understand. Are you sure? First exercise! Okay, the saw Paul shuffle. First, you spread your legs, and then your arms apart, like this. Then you shuffle this way. I'm Saul! Then you do a 375 degree turn. Then you shuffle back. I'm Paul! We do this 373, five times degrees. Wait, what? Go! Okay. One! <laughs> Four! Juice Newton! 375 degrees! All right, what did Paul Saul do next? Uh, well, let's just go with Saul today. Let's do this, okay. Saul! Okay. Before he met Jesus, Saul was actually a pretty scary guy. He would seek out followers of Jesus and have them thrown in jail. That's bad. Yes, it was. You see, Saul didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. So... One day, Saul and some of his friends set out on the road to Damascus where they were hoping to find Jesus' followers to arrest. Ah! Second exercise! The Damascus 5K in place, half marathon, fun run! That's not fun! We run in place for 5K miles! Go! One! 17! Goose down pillow! Austin Pfeffer Incorporated! That's not a word. Bluto! Five miles, Kay! Where are we? Are we in Damascus yet, Kellens? Uh, are we? No, we, we are not. Oh. But Saul, at this point, Saul and his friends were traveling on the road to Damascus when suddenly a huge light from heaven flashed around Saul. Oh, I know what that is. He's doing the final pose down at the Mr. Galacticon Muscle Expo. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly like that. Oh. It was probably more like this. Ah! Kellen, where are you? Ah, I'm scared! Yeah, that's probably how Saul was feeling. Ah! So, you okay? Ah, I can't see. Oh, no. Well, at that point, Saul fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice come from everywhere that said, Huh? Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? The voice is coming from the cans! I'm scared! Horvath, it's just... It's, it's just a special effect. Huh? 
Okay. Hello. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Next exercise. I call this the light bright face pinch. Come in real close. Closer. Closer. First, you start with your face, and like a light bright is shining on your face, and you squint your eyes like this. And then after that, you the light goes away, and you can finally see, and you go like this. Ah, we'll do this 148,627 times! Ready? That's goes! It. One! Ah, two! Ah, five! Ah, 148,000 and the other half of the number, I can't remember! Ah, all right, what's happened next, Kellens? Well, when Saul heard the voice say, Why are you opposing me? He replied, who are you, Lord? It was Jesus. Right. The voice said, I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Whoa! After that, Saul got up and opened his eyes, but he couldn't see a thing. Not even his shoes? Nothing. Whoa! His friends had to lead him into the city of Damascus. Saul couldn't see. For three days, he didn't eat or drink anything. What happened next? What happened next? Did he eat on the four days? At least some sandwiches or a hot pocket? Well, oh, that's good. But actually, we'll talk about what else happened to Saul next time. Oh, no! A cliffhanger! I love it! Next exercise! The cliffhanger! It's a great way to build up your sips! Ah, I'm clapping gangs. Ah. Okay. Spoiler alert. Saul, who was also called Paul, ends up being one of the good guys. After he met Jesus, it changed how he saw everything. His faith was so great. He would go on to write a lot of what we call the New Testament. That's the thing about knowing Jesus. He can help you see things in a whole new way. Help me! Ah! Um, you're, you're not really... Oh, no! There's, there's I'm slipping! There's nothing. Oh, you okay. cut off the cliff! Oh! <laughs> you know what? I'll see you guys next time with more of Paul's story. Oh, I'm still falling! Oh, he's really going down. Oh! All right, Brandon, can I have my glasses back? Sure. Actually, you know, I don't... I don't think I need them after that. Kellen is right. You, you, you don't need rose-colored glasses. Having faith in Jesus can help you see things differently. Like, even when it seems like everything's going wrong, you can have faith that God's got a better plan. So when you really know Jesus and put your faith in him, it can help you see more clearly. You said it, Balloonhead. <laughs> Balloonhead. Yeah, don't worry about it. Reveal the question! Today's question is, what do you know about Jesus? Well, we know he had long hair and a beard and held his hands out like this a lot. You know, from the paintings I saw. Yeah, actually, we don't know what Jesus looked like, but we do know that he loves people. Oh, he can do miracles. Yeah, he's the son of God. Absolutely. Hey, talk about it together. What do you know about Jesus? Yep. So, do you think your perspective has changed? You know, are you seeing things differently? Absolutely. You know, just because my day started off bad, doesn't mean it has to end that way. Ah. Who needs rose-colored glasses, right? Uh, but, but I made those. And for that, I'm grateful. Until next week, I'm Brandon. And my glasses are broken. And this was the so-and-so show. See, and I broke them? Yeah, you oh, did. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's probably right. when I threw them. Yeah, yeah, gravity and, and airspeed usually don't mix well. First pose, classic pose. <laughs> 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 I call this one uh, a confused which cereal to get at the grocery store. Waved at somebody you thought you knew, but it turned out to be somebody you do. No. Oh. Hey, oh. Uh, hey, oh. Facing the wrong direction of the cameras. This, I can do this one. Yeah, this is easy. Where am I? Where am I? This next pose is called knee. <laughs> A clothing uh, model in old Sears catalogs.